Right, we have seven green counters and two blue counters in a bag, okay? Now Rhea comes along and grabs two of the counters, pulls them out of the bag, looks at them, and we have to work out what the probability of those two counters being one blue and one green, okay? Now, first thing to note is when you reach in and grab two counters and pull them out, okay, that is mathematically identical to reaching in, grabbing one counter, leaving it out of the bag, and then reaching in and grabbing another counter, okay? This is probability without replacement, okay? Reaching in, grabbing two counters at once is exactly the same as reaching in, grabbing one, not replacing it, keeping it out of the bag, probability without replacement, and then reaching in and grabbing another. Okay, right. So, let's build the probability tree. Right, so it's going to look like this, as always. Okay, you can grab either a green, okay, or a blue, okay. So with the first pick, you can grab either a green or a blue. Then the second pick, whether you've chosen, if you've chosen a green, you can then grab a green or a blue. If you chose a blue, you can then grab a green or a blue. Okay, good. Right, so we write the probabilities on the branches. So the first pick, what's the probability of grabbing a green counter? Well, there are seven green counters in the bag, and it's a total of nine. So the probability is seven ninths, okay? Quite straightforward. Now, don't forget this is probability without replacement, okay? Probability without replacement, very important. So, that green counter we've just pulled out of the bag is no longer in the bag for our second pick, which means the total number of counters is one less. So whatever this is gonna be, it's gonna be out of eight, not nine, okay? Also, with our first pick, we chose a green counter. So, that means there are now only six green counters in the bag for a second pick. So the probability of choosing a green counter with the second pick, given that you chose a green counter with the first pick, is six eighths. Good. Now, what about here? Pro probability of choosing a blue counter with the second pick, given that we chose a green counter with the first one. Well, again, there is one fewer counters, one less, one fewer counters, yeah, in, in the bag. But we chose a green counter the first one, so that means there are still two blue counters in the bag. So you've got a, a two in eight chance of choosing a blue with the second pick, given you chose a green with the first one. Okay, right. What's the probability of choosing a blue counter with the first pick? Well, with the first pick, there are nine counters in the bag, and there are two of those are blue, so you've got a two in nine chance of choosing a blue with the first pick. Okay, probability of choosing a green with the second pick, given that you chose a blue with the first pick. Again, probability without replacement. So there are only eight counters in the bag. You chose a blue with the first one, so all the green ones are still there. So all seven green ones are still there. So you've got a seven in eight chance. And finally, probability without replacement. You chose a blue with the first pick, so there's only eight counters left in the bag but you chose a blue with the first pick, so one of them is gone, so there's only one blue 
counter left in the bag if you chose a blue counter with your first pick. Great, so we've completed the probability tree diagram. Now, it's asking for the probability of choosing one blue and one green. So at this point, you look at which of these branches satisfy that condition. Well, does this branch? No, that's two greens, a green then a green. Does this branch? Green then a blue. Yes, that counts. Does this branch a blue then a green? Yes, because you get one of each. Does this branch a blue then a blue? No. So we're interested in these two branches. So now you have to work out the probability of this branch happening, of choosing a blue, a green then a blue. And you do that by multiplying these two probabilities together. So we have to do 7 ninths times 2 eighths, okay? We can simplify that. 2 eighths becomes a quarter. So that becomes 7 over 4 nines is 36, okay? So there's a 7 in 36 chance of choosing a green, then a blue. Right. That's that branch done. The other branch we're interested in, same thing, multiply that by that. Two ninths times seven eighths. As always, the multiplications, check if you can simplify before doing the multiplication. Yes, we can. Two, one, eight, four. That's it. Now we can do it. So that becomes one times seven is seven over four nines is 36. It's the same as it happens. Good. Now, we don't need to work out these two probabilities, okay? These are the only two branches that are relevant for the actual question. So the probability of this happening is 736s. The probability of this happening is 736s. So the probability of that or that happening, you have to add these two probabilities, okay? The probability of this happening or this happening means you, you have to add these two probabilities. So, the probability of one blue, one green is seven out of 36 plus seven out of 36, which is equal to 14 out of 36. Both even, we can simplify, same as seven out of 18. And that's as far as we can simplify. So that's it, seven eighteenths. Good, so that is how you do the question. We finished. <clears throat> The problem is solved, okay? But I just want to complete this probability tree diagram for your general probability question education, okay? But before I do, again, I stress that we've answered the particular exam question. We've got our four marks, okay? It's done, it's 7 18 So this bit is extra for fun, okay? So what's the probability of choosing a green then a green? You multiply, so seven ninths times six eighths. Uh, three, four, one, three. So that becomes seven out of 12. <clears throat> Good, right. Two ninths times one eighth. One, four, that's one, 36. Good, okay. As you'd expect, the probability of choosing a blue, then a blue is pretty small, because there's only two out of nine are blue. Okay, <clears throat> if we've done this properly, these four numbers should add up to one. Okay, those four numbers, why? Because there's only four 
possible outcomes. And that's these four branches here. You can only, with probability of that replacement, when you're choosing your two counters, you can only either get a green, then a green, then a green, then a blue, or a blue, then a green, or a blue, then a blue. There's no other possibility. There's only four branches. And like I said, when, if, if that, or that, or that, or that can happen, there's only four possibilities, you, you, when you add the probabilities, they should add up to one because <clears throat> that, the probability of that or that happening is that plus that. And when there's a total of four, only four possibilities, the probability of any one of them ha happening, in other words, the probability of that or that or that or that happening is that plus that plus that plus that. And because that covers all possibilities, one of those four will definitely happen, so the probability of that is one. If something is definite, the probability is one. So that's why the probability of that or that or that or that is equal to one. Okay, <clears throat> let's check it. So, seven twelfths plus seven thirty-sixes plus seven thirty-sixes plus one out of 36. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to bother rewriting these three again. Seven twelfths, which I can do it this way, I can, is the same as 21 out of 36. Okay. So that becomes, they're all over 36. So 21 plus 7 is 28, plus 7 is 35, plus 1 is 36. Boom! It's correct. Okay? So it's, it's correct. That'll do, I think. There you go. Probability tree diagrams. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click the like button and it would be a massive help if you could subscribe. It would also be amazing if you could support me on Patreon. All the papers and everything are on my website, drgem.com, and I'm also on social media. Thank you.